Okay, so the first thing about don't mount is going to be what we call counter rotation. So you know how you get with the osteo path, you know, open, trust me. <laughs> and you know, this kind of thing, right? So we're gonna we're gonna get like this, exactly like Sam. Sam, the, this guy on top is gonna put his foot like that. He's gonna put himself into this counter rotation position where his shoulder's going that way and his hips going that way. And we're gonna sit here like that and we're gonna do that. Done, that's all you're gonna get. Five seconds, but you're gonna do it. All right, so you can really get it. So what if I was a, what do you call it? Ch chiropractor or osteo? Chiropractor. 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 So if I was a chiropractor and I wanted to do that, but I did not have a right hand because it was eaten by a white pointer shark. <laughs> he visited Australia. So, so now I do that with my hip. I do that with my hip. But what if I had no hands and I was a chiropractor? So I'm now doing counter rotation with my hip on his knee and my head on his shoulder. And if you're taller, it will be your chest. So you're just putting pressure there and pressure there. Okay? Do you see what I'm saying? So I mount it on top of this leg. That's the first thing that we're going to do. Um, and then we're going to mount him from here. And then the next, or most of this seminar, or this, this class, what we're doing now, is going to be ways to arrive here. So what I'm doing now is, uh, I'm just we're going to get from this position to the mount, and then we're just going to find the 58 ways to arrive here. <laughs> Right, so you see, so uh, Elliot, that, I call that, that's a, one approach is called popcorn approach. So in other words, you go into a cave, what, you know, we go five steps in, popcorn, 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 and now all I've got to do is get you from the bottom of the cave to that bit of popcorn, and then you can find your way out every time. So uh, that's going to be the, pop, the pile of popcorn, the popcorn starts here. I'm going to show you a way to get to the mount, and then we spend the rest of the time exploring the cave, which will take the rest of our lives, but we know if we can get here, we can get there. We find ways. So that's the one of the, we have 100 teaching models, but that one suits for this when the final destination out of the cave or on the mount is the same every time. They're different for squares because it can be different. All right, so we're here um, and we get counter, counter rotation. First thing we do is I'm going to do a sliding cross face. So there's lots of different kinds of cross faces. And one of the things we need to do as um, technical practitioners of Jiu Jitsu is make distinctions between things that look the same. Orange, Mandarin look the same, but they're not. And the more ways you can tell me that they're not the same, the more expert you are about citrus fruits, right? So the same thing with hip escapes. You know, if you say do hip escapes, you should say which one, because there's about six different ways to do a hip escape, depending on what you're trying to train for. Regay, dodge your knees, but doing all kinds of things. Getting out of north south, it's the opposite. So you need to make distinctions. So the first one we're going to make today is a normal cross face is a downward pressure cross face, which is about pinning him. Sliding cross face, very different. It's about moving him. So we're here. It comes the top part of his head above his ears, and we drive his head. And that opens up the space between that elbow and his knee. Yep. So when I say cross face, sliding cross face, above his head, because it's the end of the lever, slide. Now that I've done that, there's room for my knee to come in and hit him in the belt. And now he goes live and starts to move, and he spills me onto the mouth. That's the essential idea. All right, so once again, we're here. Counter rotation, sliding cross face, knee him in the gut, he goes live and moves, and he feels like a dope, and he's like, hey, dope mouth, because he did it, wasn't me. Right, good job. So one, laying down, just like that, Sam, show him real quick. Do that, go. This is most unusual. This is the way I was taught it. Um, and mostly, I would say that's with almost everything else, 99%, no. If the way, I, whatever, when I learned spider guard, I learned spider guard technique number 15. You know, because that's not what I turned up, that's what I was working on. I didn't learn what I should have learned, in my view, because there was no order, it was just whatever. And so that's very unusual. So, but in this case, it, it, I do believe that the way I learned it was actually probably the best way to start out. I'll, I can tell you why in a minute, if, if you want. So he's gonna do um, an elbow escape. So, so he's gonna turn up on the right side, which is gonna be all the same, and he starts, go slow, get elbow, elbow escape, okay, stop. So once he gets his hip out, I can no longer redeem my, I can no longer um, you know, just get to the mount and fight it off. I've gotta be aware that I've got to a point where this is untenable and I need to change. That's one of the things that anyone who's a blue belt or better, you, you, you've probably got to that point, you realize that shit, I need to bail. This is no longer working, so I go somewhere else, right? And that, that's that's a mark. in my view, that's an interesting. That's one of the marks of what I would call a blue belt. Someone who's not holding on to an untenable situation. They bailed from the marriage when they should. 
<laughs> so, so um, his elbow is caking out. Oh shit, it's gone. So what I do is that. I just move my leg. I'm here right now. Right, so, and I'm going to move the knee. That's on the back side of him. The back side. Right. So we go back again. So we're doing his elbow escape. And the, one, the knee that's behind over here drives his leg over. And here I am on it. And then you know what to do. Right? So then you're going to be right. So this is the first one. And what when, I, when we did this, I did that. Got on the mount. And then you elbow escape the other side. And I did it. We won't do that today. So we'll get more reps. And it'll be easier. We'll save time just by doing it on one side. But just know... The entire drill is both sides. And it, why it's great is because it gives you elbow escape. So you're getting benefit out of it as well as me. You're not just being the dummy. Everyone's winning, right? And that's why I think it's a really great way to learn this, this move. All right, so I, I just need that. I need to be on top of this leg. One last way to think about it is if we mount someone, we've usually, in most situations, we fix up this side of the, this knee first, and then we find a way to get the other knee over. So. One way to think about dope mount is if my leg is on the other side of that leg, it's already over. So we've done the far leg, we're just gonna find a way to get the near leg there. So it's like at, at the opposite or reverse way to mount someone. That's another way to think about it. And you've gotta find ways to think about something to go, oh, right, yeah, that now you take ownership. So half of it is trying to find a way that you think about it that makes sense with your world, which is unique. And so that's another, that helped me a lot when I think, oh right, I've already mounted over there, I just gotta get this knee done. So, let's go, on the mount. Um, but this happens a lot. You know, when they escape side control, when you let them escape side control, and they thought it was their idea, cheap stuff. Or whether you can, or um, you know, they shoot your legs, you sprawl, or whatever you get to hit this. So we're gonna do a front headlock. So front headlock, quick class, I'm gonna catch Jack's chin with my hand, called chin strap. Make sure my elbow's in, so he can't duck up, do a duck under. I'll do that. I'm gonna do it pretty badly. So what's bad about this right now is my shoulders on top of his body. So Jack, you're gonna go super slow, but like inexorably forward. Just go toward my leg. Go, go, go. See what happens? He gets penetration because my weight's on top of him. So he can get penetration underneath me to grab singles and doubles and stuff like that. Um, so two big mistakes people make because there's a lot of techniques to do from front head lock. But two big mistakes people make usually is the initial position. They have their weight on top, their shoulder on top, and then that's not a good idea. And the other thing is my toes are on the ground. So go slowly forward, Jack. Look what happens, my feet stick, and he stands me up, and then shoots my legs. So it's laces down. Now if he drives forward, you see? Okay. So with the laces down, you'll, he can drive you down the road, <laughs> but with your feet stuck on the ground, he will prop you up, verticalize your legs, and then he'll start hitting singles and doubles and Iranians and stuff like that. Uh, Rain is a when you think we pop out the back, and they made a really great job of that. And won the Olympics 35 years ago. Uh, so we caught a rain. Anyway, we're on top. So I, I do this. Watch. I've got his chin. See, my shoulder is on his back. So my shoulder's below sea level, below the level of his back. Now he can't come forward. Doesn't matter. He doesn't have matter. He might drive me down the road, but he can't penetrate. So when I say chin strap, chin and shoulder below the level of Jack's right shoulder. Boom. That, and I can't do that with my head on top. So that's why another way to say it is get your head off the side. Right, now I can hold him there. I can also see everything. That knee, that knee, the other arm under there. This is awesome. I can do a whole lot of things. So, got it? We get it. Go to the side, head button his hip, find his girlish ankle with that <laughs> left hand, get our knees off the ground so we've got power, drive him down, and connect our hands in an S grip, which is called, what's the name? Cradle, right? Very, very um, common, you know, every kid in primary school in America knows what a cradle is. Not well utilised in jiu-jitsu, not enough. Um, a lot of reasons for that, but one of the reasons is there's no obvious finish from the cradle. There's no obvious thing, or maybe does, you can do a few things, but there are some ways to get inside 50-50 heel hooks and stuff like that, but um, there's no obvious finish. It's great for holding people, but as soon as I let Jack go to do something, he's already in a great position on his side, ready to guard, ready to go to his knees. So B to J guys go, no, fuck. You know, so they don't usually use it. So it's good to use things that people don't use much, provided it's high percentage. So not weird for weirdness sake, but it's gotta be two things. It's gotta be weird in that no one's got the counter, so you're a Southpaw fighter, but it's also gotta be highly effective. If you can do those two things, 
it's awesome. If it's just weird, it's not awesome, it's mostly bullshit. Um, and if it's, um, if it's uh, something everyone knows, it's difficult, it, it's normal, it's difficult because everyone's seen it, so they're starting to get good counter. So this is one of those kind of weird things, quite so thanks for that. So I'm back here. I've got him here with my hands. Now I'm going to drop on my right hip. I'm going to bring over my leg, collect his leg, and now I'm going to let him go. Look around. So I'm cross facing in the gut, now I'm on top. Okay? So let's do that again, Jack. So I've got his chin, shoulder in front of his shoulder, on his elbow, I'm like that. Go to the side, head butt, ankle. Drive him down, connect my hands, and squish him for a while. Pop on my hip, collect his leg. Now the second I let his head go, it's going to spring back. So we want to utilize that at the exact moment when he goes, ah. We call it Jack in the Box. All right, thanks, Jack. <laughs> yeah, look. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. As it intersects with BJJ, which is not wrestling. So, um, often you. Let me see the best way to think about it because I've not taught this like this before. Because I just want to talk about the intersection with the feet again. It's if I get if you get on top of me and I give you a flat or just on top of any normal way, if I give him a flat surface to put his chest on, that means his arms are free, right? His arms are free to do lots of you know dances, anacondas, lapel chokes, bow and arrows chokes. So it's not in my interest to be flat like this, okay? So let's swap around. So if you give me this flat surface, I'm awesome. I can do my 15 things, yep. So what is your counter to that? Well, put your head on the ground and lift your ass up in the air and walk your feet toward me a bit. Shit, now it's much more, and try to, try to put your butt on my head, like straight your legs. That, it's awkward for me now because I can't, I've got no flat platform to go on. Right? And then you get much of opportunities to get out or reshoot me and stuff like that. So you don't want to be down like that. You want to get your ass up in the air and take away my platform, which I can start launching my attacks from. So if I'm on top of you and you do that, that's, that's the first way that I uh, was taught by my coach to bring the usefulness of cradle into jiu-jitsu when someone's doing something smart like that, and that's what I'm watching. Because I'm sitting there going, I want to do that, I can't do that, I can't do anaconda, it's all gone. No, I can grab his leg and turn him down and then do stuff. So that was, that, that's just a way, and that stuck with me, and then, you know, later on I became more interested in cradle, because that happens a lot. Imagine? Yeah. Now we'll go back to what the hell we want, which is not that. Okay, back, uh, so, um, okay, so he's down, if he's on his back, I can be on my feet. If he was up, I need to be down. Or put him back down. I, I can't, if he's up, I can't be like this. X guard, shin on shin, uh, low John Smith, shoots, shoots, single legs. It's not good for me to be here. Right, so I've got to be down. So today we're going to be with this kind of situation. I just want you to be aware of that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come into what nowadays is called headquarters. We used to call it Ride the Pony. <laughs> That's the old name. So, um, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to grab his foot. Not here, because then he can put his foot on my arm and spider me. So I grab his toes. I get an angle. I'm going to guide that foot between my legs. Right. I'm going to step like this. So notice when I'm stepping, I'm stepping through his leg, not to his leg. But to his leg, Galaheva. You've got all kinds of shit there. Right, I step through his leg. By stepping through his leg, that turns his hip toward Seymour. Which, so if I want to do a knee slide pass, it's way easier when your hips turn the wrong way. If I don't turn his hip that way, and I just do that, no, relax, and I just do this, it'll give you the knee shield drama. So do you see, if you want to pass that side, you want to always turn his hip the other way. As a heuristic, there's exceptions, but that's a good idea. So we're doing that, and you do that by stepping, through the leg, now it can't put down here hook and his hips turn the wrong way. So you get a lot of benefits by trying to go through the leg and instead of just stepping in here. Make sense? So I'm going to have the leg, we're going to step through the leg, settle in to our ride the pony nowadays called headquarters. If you've got a gi, ride the pony. Now, I want to go that way, so I need to angle my foot a little bit so there's a straight line. And now, 
And there you are. Nice. And I have to fidget and I think. Got it? So, because we did it. Popcorn. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Let's go. I'll talk you through it. Do an endless amount of these fine ways to get to that initial starting position. That's, there's plenty of scope there for you to be creative and interesting and arrive at that. Think about all the different sweeps you can do with a bit of modification. You're there, you know, so that there's a lot of scope for work on something that we wouldn't think there's much more to discover, but that's complete. Seriously, things like that is all over for you, for everyone. That's creativity is all about you starting from knowing that there's a lot to discover and we don't know anything. And we know some things, but we start from where we are and then we explore. And sometimes a lot of dead ends, but you've got to find all the dead ends to figure out where you're going to go. You have to be up for doing that. Same, so. <laughs> All right, so let's do another one. Would you mind helping me? Yes. Oh, sorry, what's your name? Ryan. Yep. Thank you, Ryan. Let me go. Okay, so again, we're there, and now we're going to do leg drag. So basically, we're going to come to this position. So that is like an arm, like an arm drag, and that's why it's called leg drag. But um, if everyone was a beginner, if you were all super beginners, I would say uh, a leg drag is just like an arm drag. I mean, you shouldn't be no arm drag. Um, but if you're advanced, I'd say leg drag is very different than arm drag. <laughs> so, it, because it depends on you. So, in teaching, we use, uh, we, we, use oh, yes, uh, we, we use heuristics a lot. We say things like, you know, you sweep someone from an underhook, underhook butterfly, you sweep them, you don't go to the mount, don't do it from an underhook, because when you land the mount, they've got an overhook and they'll open you off if they're good. So that's just easier to say to a beginner, right, but it's completely not true if you're advanced. <laughs> You just got to make sure that when you land them out, your elbow's out wide like that, and then you can attack the arm and not tuck in. So we say things like that as parents. Now, don't cross the road with your shoulder in my hand. It's, that's the right thing to say to a three-year-old. It's not the right thing to say to a 25-year-old. Right? So rules are temporary suggestions <laughs> based on your current set of conditions. So, so I don't like the idea of this is the rule. No, it, it depends. Where are you? What, what it's about. So there's a lot of things in Jiu Jitsu like that. Don't give your back was one of the first ones I ever heard. Don't give your back. But if I adhere to that rule after black belt, there's so many things I can't do. I need to give my back to do the thing. So the rules are going to, often going to, be, going to be broken. So, you know, it's like an arm drag. It's like an arm drag. And that makes sense to you? It's like an arm drag, but it's not. So because uh, the, uh, someone who's more advanced should be able to appreciate the differences between things that look similar. So it looks like an arm drag, but it's not. Why? Because with an arm drag, just stand up for a minute there. We tend to starting out by dragging this arm, and then we move it. Right? There's lots of different ways to do that. Here, yeah, first on the shoulder, and then we do the lateral movement with the arm drag. So we can do a lot of different arm drags, but we're basically moving him because his shoulder's so, you know, there's got so much movement, it's easy to do it. Now, if we're going to try that with his leg, his leg, hip, hip doesn't work that way like his arm. So it's harder to drag the leg over here. So we're going to start out with the simplest of leg drags, two hands on that, and basically we're moving. So we haven't really moved our partner at all. We're the ones that are doing the movement. So you see how it's very different than an arm drag, if you can appreciate that? For beginners, I would go, well, when I say beginners, pin belts and curl belts or whatever, I would go, just like an arm drag, bro. No, but not if you're a back belt. So, yeah, move to the side, lock it in. Easy. I want to go that way, get my angle. Now, I'm going to lateral move like we did before, except this time you're going to see your legs are going to go in between his legs. Yep. And you make your splits, and then you jump the fence. And then you do it. So you've got that extra movement of having to jump the fence with your right leg to get to where we're familiar with. Here, leg drag, and split him up, sprawl on it, jump the fence. Now we don't have to say anything, you know what to do. Got it? Let's go. Up, then rabbits. So I look for the thing that tells me I'm in the direction of the rabbit. Because if you can already see the rabbit, meaning that's a metaphor for your goal, whatever it is, if you can already see that, you've done it. So the thing you want is out of sight. So we look for the signpost. That's a better word than rabbit shit. <laughs> signpost that tells us this is the way. So the signpost is, it might not be, it might not be, you're not going to see exactly this and be there, right? Um, but you'll, you'll be near it, you know, maybe you've, you've gone and maybe you've killed this leg down and he's going to cross over and you press it to the ground and you go, oh fuck, and then you jump on it, right? You see what I'm saying? So then, so you're looking for where you're near, not exactly that, 
but in a situation where, like if I did that, and I said, come up with a way to do what we're doing, you would push it down, and then you jump on it, and then you're there. See, you're in the rabbit shit area, but now you see the rabbit. You, you know what I mean? So we're, we're there now with, with, with this, which means you're away. You can go home and go, mm, you know, and, and do things. You might be in the, you might be in the Z or something. So everyone, no matter where you are, you're going to try to find a way. You know, sort of here, you're in this position, and I, I, I use my scorpion book, and I kick bump him out, and then there I am. I take him down, and oh my God, mm, you know. So you, you'll be able to do it. So that's mission accomplished from my point of view. I mean, I could go on and on, but it would be not a waste of time, but it would be not the best use of time. You're probably almost better to go different subject and get you to the line, I call it getting you to the line. You know what I mean? Just quickly, Same with on. the previous uh, leg drag technique, would it be erroneous to bypass the fence jump and go straight to the dope mount? You could. You oh, you could, could. okay. Yeah. I suppose how nimble you are and... and... Yeah, all of that, yeah. Okay. It's just good to... Um, do it the way we've done it. The basic way to do it is pretty good control, better, okay. better control. Fair enough. Yeah. But we could um. So, so, so you keep stand up. Okay. So you're gonna get two hands on that, and, and no, one up there and one down there, and go over there, other way around. Not do that leg drag. Just grab it like that. Walk over there and and put my leg to the ground and start doing push-ups. Right. So yeah, he's got like fucking hands like that. It's pretty easy to do, right? So again, we're here. He goes, fuck you. And he goes my leg. And he goes like that. What am I gonna do? What do you think I'm gonna do? I'm coming over with this leg. I'm doing crossover. Otherwise, you pass my guard. As I do it, what do you got the ideas now? Yeah, go. Ah. Yeah. Right, so you see what I'm saying? So you you can come up with, I could, like if we stayed two hours, I could come up with 20 we've never seen. But so could you. Right? And the more you know, of course, the more different angles you're going to have to look at it. But that's where we're at. That's what I wanted to achieve with every subject. And I try to, that's my new little idea. I call it. I know it's shares with people usually because it's better. What, what's that mean? But I get you to the line, which means I get you to a point where you're gonna you're gonna be able to create. You're gonna be able to make much more out of what we've done. And that's that's leverage. You, you you find many more ways to use the knowledge we got than than the thing we did, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. Any questions on that so far or last far? Cradle. Cradle very good, not often used, fantastic position. You can see obvious darses and stuff. Um, that's something, Cradle. It's worthwhile spending three minutes. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Cradle. I'm doing this for a couple of people, but it's only because you've heard the word Cradle, you did the Cradle, we're right there, it's an unusual gem. Because Cradle, the Cradle is easy to get, I've got it, and now what can I do? I could maybe try Darcy, but look what I'm going to do. You know we swallow the leg? Now we go on the other left hip and double swallow it. Uh -huh. See that? And then we're going to go over his leg and then look where I am. For example, right? So any, I know there's some people that like heel hooks inside Ashigarami, for example. I'm guessing, and I think I'm a good guesser. Um, so there's a lot to do from the cradle, which is a bit of an interesting area in that it's so good, it's a wrestling fundamental, but it's not overly used in the jiu-jitsu arena, which means that's scope for you to start thinking about, you know, what you can do from there. Obvious dances and stuff, but that's something I came up with a bunch of years ago, and it's, it's really good. No one expects to get inside Ashley Garami from the cradle. That's uh, good to do. They're escaping side control, let them escape, and then just connect the cradle. Mm -hmm. And then you can start to do all these things. Right? Good job. Drink break, go. Three minutes. Now, um, so let's get, um, okay, so we'll, we'll, this will be the front, we'll, we'll just get some space and we'll do some things for two minutes. I'm going to do a really crash course in the shower. There's various kind of structures you can use to give yourself, not for sparring when you're moving around, playing a game for you know, long periods of time because it's different than these other cuts, body shots, you can do all these things. But just for like five seconds of people just hammering on your face, which is quite, quite normal. Um, and, then, um, and so there's various kind of structures. There's different kind of structures and they give you different outcomes. So,
For example, if you want to like knee and elbow people, you come in with what we call a visor, like a visor, you smash in, because then their head's always there and you can start net. Now that'd be very different from a shell, which is a little bit better for sparring and moving around and coming straight forward. And then there's the foxhole, which is good for taking people down with body armor on your way a lot, and you just go crack and they just go boom. You just can't get knocked out. And so it's all this kind of thing. So um, we're gonna use a simple one today called the shell. So let me give you a one, 30 second, one minute lesson on the shell, and then we're gonna pair off, and then we're gonna get gloves on, and we're gonna you know, have him hit us a hundred times, and, and we're gonna clinch him and make him pay. All right, so um, can we face that way, pick one up. Do you, oh, do you wanna take your tops off? Oh, no, I'm okay. Hot? Yeah, good, so let's do that. We don't need, we don't need the key. Everyone copy this, so face front, I don't care, see how formal the dogs, don't turn it out. Um, and this is kind of assuming the fight's on, not pre-fight, it's assuming the fight's on. So here's what I want. We're going to do three things to form a basic shell. One, we're going to tuck our chin down so the head, that head movement goes away, which is what causes knockouts in your head movement, right? It's the brain going back and forth inside. So by rocking the chin down there, we used to do it with a coin, put a coin under there, look around, drop coin, do push-ups. You don't need that, you use your brain to do the coin. Just hold it down. Now that goes away, that's number one. Next is engage the traps, so we want our shoulders up around our ears. And then the last thing is, we open our hands and we grab our chin, we literally grab our head. So not like that, with boxing gloves, like literally grab our head so it can't be pulled off very easily. So it's chin down, shoulders up, grab the head, and you're looking through the crack. So it doesn't have to be like that. People don't go, I mean, we Chun guys, but they can't fight, so. <laughs> you know, so normally punches are coming from the shoulders and haymakers and crazy stuff, right? It's not like, so you don't have to have it like that. You can be kind of like that and be very fine. That's it. So we're like that, and then we're moving around, and just making sure we're not doing any uh, kung fu crossovers, no kung fu crossovers, uh, no ballerinas, get together, right? And no skateboard riders, which is so fucking 70s, all right? So we're just moving around, and we're just like that. No one does that. They just don't do it. They just don't come back to training. So you see what I'm saying? So the default is always right. So, and he's gonna pop away, he doesn't have to be too clever about it, just bang, 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 and I'm just gonna stay here and look at him go. That's it, I'm gonna do that, okay? We're gonna do that for a little bit. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to ask him to go faster at, with straight shots at my head, like da, 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 and I'm going to randomly bend my knees, not timing it, no skill required. I'm ran at random intervals. I change my level. So, bop, 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 go. Yeah, we call that Tybo. So, 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 right. So, so, because what I want to do is I want to run in and connect my shell to Stu's chest. Now, I could just T-Rex him, meaning uh, make his arms go in. So he's punching like that. And I just go fuck you. You know, I man up and go in. But it is better if I can change my level because then I'm going in against no resistance and then come back up. So I change my level, go in and come back up. So that's gonna look like this. He's gonna start punching, ba, 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 ba. I take three or four just to uh, make you know, build my confidence and then I change level and then I blast in. So I'm connecting the last two things and go. And then when I go in there, I don't go in there, I'm not wrong. I go in and I, I impact him like a billiard ball, which means I stop, he keeps going away. And then I go to, yeah, you see what happens? So that's a big mistake. So I crash and stick, right? I crash and stick for maybe two seconds or something. So that's gonna look like this. See what I did? And then we're gonna start doing shit from there, all right? Got it? So I'll talk you through all of that. So gloves on that side. What I want today is we're gonna get in there. Man. And I, I just want an underhook. I can get an underhook here, I can get another on shoulder. What I want now is just, or you can get a weight, a tight waist. See a tight waist? Yeah, we call it first date. <laughs> right, so, so how is it first date? Now, I'm here, right? And I want to reach under. But do you see, I, I, I'm close. But there's still, I'm still that far away because my shell is that far away. So I'm still away from him. So I might get him, and I'm going to hold him as hard as I can here. And you're just gonna walk back and pull out of it. Go. You're never gonna, and then you're down. Then you're down. He's gone. Right. So we're gonna get closer. So how we do it is the Mayweather. So with the shoulder down. Do the shell, maybe. So I'm close, shoulder. I'm close, shoulder. Close, shoulder. Just like 
that, right? That is going to get me close. So watch here. I'm going this way. I'm close. Shoulder, waist. See how it's way better. So it's going to end up looking like this. He's punching away. Take a few. Change my level. Bang. Shoulder. Clear. And then we're jujitsu buying him or whatever. Yeah? Uh, so that's as opposed to... <laughs> Old school. <laughs> It don't fucking work against an idiot, you know, or people who are a bit scared because they heard you do some jiu-jitsu. It's just not going to work if anyone's having fights. So I don't like the whole I fucking idea. I'm retesting it a billion times on different conditions. I just do what I'm telling you. Okay, so, got it? So, first thing you're going to do is hit your hands down. I'm just going to lean in, you can lean in a bit. I'm going to go here, shoulder, here, shoulder, uh, shoulder and ear. Here. And you can, you can do it against the wall, stand up, but I can be here, here, here. Right, so you see the difference? I've just got closer. So close, close harder. First day. So close, closer, coming up, get to the side, trap the arm. Jiu Jitsu things. <laughs> right? Um, so we're going to do that. So let's go. We're going to, you know what? I'll, I'll just go close here <coughs> and underhook here. But it could be there, and that will get us to the back. You know, and, and to the and, and to single legs and to a whole and hip throws and uchimas and uchimara ankle picks and all these things. But to, today I want close shoulder. Thanks for the underwork because we're going to make use of this against the wall in a minute. It'll be different. But it could be it could be tight lace or it could be near underwork or it could be cross shoulder underwork. It could be any of those things, and they all lead to different things. Got it? Good job. So can, uh, we can do it. Can we? Let's see. Uh, how can I fix it? Here's, oh, okay, we can fix it. Everyone make a line. Start, can you start there? And someone get there, and let's just make a line around. We need a line there. Everyone get around there. And I want some on the wall. So I need about one, two, three, four, one, two, three, something like that. Good enough. Right, so where the line, we're going to move. Right, so we've got a problem with space for this and minimum walls, so we're going to fix it. Well, you're going to be a little bit of blood, but. Would be right, good enough. Okay, so here I am with my partner coming off the wall about just about a meter, right? So he's going to start punching away. We won't use the glass, so just open hand or just go wide or whatever. And my job is to shout, little change, contact, into the wall, right? So he's punching away, shell, hit, into the wall, shoulder, under the wall. Yep, that's what I want. Now, here's the next bit I want. I want to tap that knee. Yeah, thank you for that. Tap that knee and run past him. Oh, we're not doing we do jiu jitsu. <laughs> so, we're doing what's called a knee tap takedown. And I'll give you the crash course in knee tap takedown, verbal. And you're going to do it in real life with no practice. I want to grab that and I'm going to run that one across the front of him. Not, not sideways. I'm going to turn and I'm going to sprint. That way, like I'm, look like I'm going to sprint. So get the feet right. And obviously, if I do that, he's going to move that leg out. So that's what the knee tap does. That says no to, to movement. And here's the here's the wrong thing. Easy to do. My left hand taps his knee. It travels with me. My left hand has to stay there, and I go past it. I think about like in a canoe. You know, you stick the paddle in the water. Do, do you understand the water's not moving? The paddle's in the water, and it's moving you past it. It's in the same GPS coordinate that it was in when you stuck it in there. You can't move the ocean, by the way. So, so it, you put it in, and we go. So, so we have this underhook. There's no back because we've got him on a car or a wall. This is there, but I must leave that hand in that coordinate and run past it. And if there's space, you've got a knee ride. Okay, so we could do it in space. I mean, we could do it. Right, let's do it against the wall for fun. It's more fun. This knee tap going, I'm passing his guard. So I've got knee right. That was how we would do it out in the real space in place. But against a wall or a car, I need to run her and then I'll do knee right. So knee ride is where you want to go. And then you can choose to disengage or attack. That's, what, that's the beautiful thing about knee right. You know what I mean, knee right, though. Not knee on belly. Don't call it that. Knee right, knee right. Two syllables here, if I could say. One syllable, do it a thousand times. Oh, it's a beautiful. <laughs> so, um, so um, 
knee ride and is great because it's like into me, I can be halfway there, I can engage to him. Jiu Jitsu, I can strike, I can disengage. You know, there's times for all of those things, right? So it's a wonderful position um, to use. So you're trying to do that, tap your knee and running part, and then your knee right again. Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, great. Drink break, well, uh, it's in a whole minute, go. 60 seconds, 59, 59. You all know basic Oompa, okay? You know what I mean by Oompa? You know, put your wrong. So that's awesome, except when you're punching them in the face. So. That's a problem, right? So we're gonna we're gonna um, combat it. We're gonna make more combative application for when someone's mounting you, but they're not trying to choke you or stab them out. They're gonna die, dog. That's a, that's gonna be a problem. Um, Stu, Stu, so, you won't use glass because it's too much time to waste. It. So it's done now. All right. Um, so. The first thing about it, so if we do the basic hook, well, let's do the basic hook, the first thing you're going to learn Jiu-Jitsu. White belt, day one. So when I, when I learned Jiu-Jitsu, I learned all these things, you know, hundreds of things, and it took 10 years, and then when I got my black belt in 97, my instructor, Hagen Machado, on Saturday said, congratulations, here's the black belt, well done, good job, we're going to start again Monday as if you know nothing. <laughs> and I thought he was just saying one of those things, that he was literally saying the truth. On Monday he goes, okay, uh, Opa. Do you know Upa? Yeah, I know it. Show me. Mm -hmm. And then the next three or four things he showed me, which was very simple things, basic armbar, Americana, every single one of them he improved by 50% in the next three days. And I went, why the fuck? Why didn't you tell me all that <laughs> 10 years ago? And he says, well, you couldn't speak, this is what he says, you couldn't speak the language. And I went, do you mean Portuguese? You don't know the language of, that is jujitsu, all the mechanics and movement and timing and kinesthetics, awareness, and you didn't know leverage, you didn't know all these techniques. Now that you can speak that, you'll understand when I tell you to do the fucking thing this way. And so he said, here's what I want you to do. Go away, make a list. I think it was 150 or 200, I can't remember. Make a list of the techniques that you are guaranteed that you know really well. Just give me 100 or 150 or 200, whatever. So I went on, made a list, and then as he said, we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. Put them in some kind of order. Oh, I, I did, I'm very like that. So I put them in a very, you know, an order. Of, and and then we, we, we ticked them off over the next, I don't know, I don't, I, I'm going to say five or six years. We, we ticked it off. And every single technique was like I had a new, like an epiphany. Because I was ready to appreciate details and nuance. I had a palette for it. And the first thing I learned was, was, was um, Upa, day one. So I'm going to give you an example. So we're going to do it in a minute, then we're going to add punches. Um, so he's got a, he's on top of me, he's got a hand on my body, like choking me or doing something like that. Right? The normal Upa is like, grab two hands, I trap the foot, I bridge and roll. Except that I'm going to hold your hands as hard as I can, I want you to pull up and rip that thing out, go. You're never going to hold that hand. You're going to get punched in the face. That's what's going to happen. So if you try to go like that, he rips it up, go, fuck the bang, I'm going to die. So, it's, he's got a hand on my body, so this is what I learned on the Monday, the first technique I ever learned after my black belt. Right traps right, I kick him in the back of the head with this leg, which I can't, because my knee will hit him, so I try to lift my hip and kick him in the head, as hard as I can, that's gonna bring his head down. Then you're gonna grab it and block it into your shoulder. Because now pull your hand out, way harder, because it's sandwiched. I now, instead of trapping the foot like that, which you can pull it out if you've got shorter legs than me, I just drop my knee on it. Don't, don't fall. I drop my knee on it. See, now pull it out. You can't pull it out. Uh, stay the head, because I'm not finished. <laughs> and now I move my head out of the way. See, I move my head out, away from here as far as I can. So now I'm going in a straight line instead of up and then left, like going in a T intersection. So let's go here. All right, and then I get my knee through. So you can't put me in there, close guard. And I went, what the fuck? But that would have been good 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And you go, yeah, but you were an idiot 10 years ago. You didn't speak, you didn't know anything. So I said, oh, thank the fuck, that's gone. I oh, can't wait for tomorrow to do Amba and then Americana and then everything else. And not every single thing was like that. I went, what the fuck? But that's when my Jiu Jitsu has started to develop appreciation of details and nuance and things like that. So we'll do that really quickly. So you see what I'm doing? Number one, we're going to go right and right or left and left, right and right. We're going to lift our hip and kick him in the head, which is going to do what? Bring his head within grabbing range. Once the head's in grabbing range, we can lock him down. We call that the sandwich. So now his arm is sandwiched in there. We flop our knee, not our foot. We flop our knee, because think about my foot. That's not helping me go that way. If I flop my knee, I'm already going that way, and there's more weight. Hip off the ground. 
flop the knee up to the ground. If I stay straight, I, I bridge up and then turn left. So I go up at 150 mile an hour and go to zero and then turn left at five mile an hour. It, right? You take your head away, so you're only going one direction and not two. Like you're going around a corner in a car, you can keep the speed up. All right, let's go to so one way down. <coughs> right there. Uh, he's, not, he's not doing jujitsu, he's not grabbing my neck. I'm going to fucking put it on there. You know, <laughs> I'm deaf. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've got a shell. Here's a genius idea, right? Shell. Not with my head down, with my head off the ground. So if it hits it, there's somewhere for my head to move. If it's down, it'll move, it'll go that way. So I push out, and he starts punching away. Take a couple for fun, better with gloves, right? And then I make his hands go on the mat. So how do they make his hands go on the mat? We just did it. We lift our hip and kick him in the back of the head. You try, you can't do it. So just do it, do a good job. So I go bang, 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 kick him in the back of the head. And now we immediately go, this is called an inside tie. Inside tie, so wrestling move, um, name. And I'm, I'm going heavy on my hooks. So now, even if he picks one hand off the ground to punch me, I'm a little bit more in control. I'm not getting punched in the face. I want to control this hand, right? And then control the leg and take him over. You all agree? But instead of like trying to pull, I'm sitting there doing this and he's getting fucking nailed. So now I do what we call the swing. This is not going to move. We move. All right, so reset. Inside tie. Do the swing. Inside tight, do the swim. And then we're going to, down we go, flop our knee, take him over, get our punch in the face. Or like that. So, um, the swim, so it's, we call it the swim because we're, you know, I'm basically swimming upside down backwards. Which I did once in fucking Newcastle. Fuck. Don't go into an unlit swimming pool at night time and then do this. You can see what happened. I hit that wall at about, probably only six or seven kilometers an hour. <clears throat> I suffered for about how long that? Five years <laughs> from a nerve damage because you're only going five, but you go from five times now to a dead stop, and that is not good for your hair. Anyway, I still caught the swim, but I get kind of PTSD. <laughs> so let's um, get the UPA, and then the next thing we did was Americana. I remember very clearly about oh, how can I not know that? I've been doing it for 10 fucking years. What the fuck? It's unreal. No one's interested in your car. That was your Jack is later. Take that one. You probably want to open up here now. We're good. We're done. American. Not that. Because no one lets you do that. Back away. Dead straight arms before I touch him. Knees jump off the ground. Hands down. So I took my knees off the ground, so every every gram of my weight went on his arm. Over angle, jump off the ground. And then rock it, don't have this there, because I haven't got good leverage of the humerus. This is going to be right on the elbow to get better lift. Oh, I went fucking 10 years ago. Hegan, why did you tell me that? You were idiots. And on he went, and we just kept going. And after about 30 techniques or something, I went, it's every technique. <laughs> <laughs> but I was ready to appreciate the little details and nuance. So it was the most exciting part of my training ever was post black belt, for those few years after black belt. It was just such an awesome journey because I could understand. If you said omoplata, I, I know eight omoplatas, but there's omoplata and omoplata. There's something, omoplata. I forgot where I was. <laughs> I still can't do it, it really breaks my tongue. It's a T, you guys have lost the T. Um, so every technique was like that. I, I, you know, every single technique. It was just wonderful. And so yeah. So I always, um, you know, when people get a black belt, I say, when I say this is the really beginning of a beautiful time of learning for you, you're starting again. I'm, I'm literally meaning that to be true. And that, that should, that's not, that, that's a wonderful. I, I think I felt depressed for a couple of days. Like, but, you know, I felt, I don't know, or anything. Because he made me feel like I knew nothing. But then I realised not knowing something is really exciting. You know when you don't know and you've never been fishing, your dad wants to take you fishing, you're like, oh, it's exciting. Because you don't go, oh, fuck, I don't know. No, it's like, it's exciting. I'm, I'm going to learn something that I don't know. I'm going to emerge from this more with a skill I didn't have before. You know, that excitement? That's what's in Jiu-Jitsu post-Black Belt. I mean, in fact, forget the Black Belt. It's just there all the time. 
the black belt was a nice little milestone for that to be brought home in such a clear way for me over the next, especially that three or four weeks. I was like, oh my God, I don't know about hooking, so how can I not know butterfly sweep? I've done it about 2,000 times, but I wasn't doing these two things, and it was like, fuck you now. And then every single technique, it was like depression for a week, <laughs> and then being embarrassed, you know, that I'm way not as good as what I thought I was, and then it was like, this is really awesome. <laughs> like, like a, you know, so I had some, I had a, enough understanding for all these little bits of information to stick. Right? So, anyway, having said all of that, it's time. You got a belt for me? Yeah. Put your views on. I mean. Is again, I tap the knee to start with because look, my elbow is not even in. So tap the knee, move my head. Do you see what I did? So it's a very lateral kind of movement. Tap, elbow in. And now I can get on my side a little bit. It does work even better if my hand's under because now I can really get on my side. But let's say we're not even doing that. Get on your side. I pull him over toward Jack. I'm going, uh, that make a bit of space. See my right foot? We call scorpion, you know, scorpion tail coming back like that. See, so we go boom and hook it. Now with the hook, he doesn't like that, so he kind of starts resisting, but that makes it stiff. We lift it out, put our other hook in. See, we've got like a little X guard on his leg. Now we turn and lift it up and suck the leg through and he's in our butterfly guard. Did you see that? So the first thing is we knock him over because then we can reach back, it's surprising. You know, I'm not super flexible, but you can you can do this and hook his leg. Then you stretch it out to get your butterfly hook in. Then you come back, lift him up with it. And I think of it as an X guard, lift him up, suck the right leg out, or stay in the right and do things, but butterfly guard. Good. So let me let's, let me address this at the start, Seymour. I just have to say a few things about this. Number one, if I'm right back here with knee shield half guard, um, I can't get the underhook. Well, I, I can, but if I take my leg out to get the underhook to do all the half guard techniques, you, you agree that you know 80% of the half guard techniques you need an underhook. Right? Um, if I take my leg out to do that, he can still pummel in with me. Pummel? No. Yeah. Oh shit. So it's it's not 50-50. It's probably 60 point. There's a good chance he can still because that's a long way to go. Yes. Wonderful. So, but if I go over here, I can get my underhook, but we don't have to play that game, right? And if I'm, if I'm back here, Seymour, a lot of other things can go well. I can't get the kimuras, I can't do all the things I want to do. It's not much use. The time to be back here is when you do a low chiro knee shield. See, my toes are crossed over in a very coquettish fashion, and my knee's driving into him like that. So you can come up and push him back and do shit like that. That's a, that's the time I would want to be away from him when my knee's down in his hip like that. But if you've got an actual knee shield, you want to be right over here. And you see, see what you see my elbows holding my inside of the knee? Yeah. And framing here. So now he can't do that shit. Right? And also, then you've got much more access to get under to underhook to do all the, you know, different sweeps and things there. So you may or may not be doing this, I don't know anything. I'm just I'm making. not. I was doing the first one where you already yeah, extended it's away. Very, it's very common. Yeah. So this is quite good. Okay. And also then, Kimura's a 
much closer. You're not reaching a long way to get the kimonos. But the most important thing is uh, you're going to win the underhook fight every time. And you've got this, this here helping to keep the knee shield in place. But, okay, we, we're having a bad day and we do things wrong and he squishes it like that. Oh shit. And now it's like this. So you can try to get a grip if there's a gi. See Seymour, a gi, a grip on the gi. Yep. I've got my spider, spider lasso. Now it's not about that, I can't turn him, he's too big and strong. So I pick him too big and I can't turn him here. If I clear that leg out and now I shift my hip, I can start to unbalance him. Then I can start doing you know, spider, spider lasso hot and shit and fuck him up. So if they've got their arm over your leg, um, and I grab that, that's a spider lasso. So you might, your brain might want to start thinking about doing spider guard things. And one of the spider guard lasso things that's worthwhile thinking about right away is not all the techniques, it's about shifting the hip. Because that'll put the pressure on. Rolling my hip <coughs> doesn't do a very good job. If I take my other look out, see? Now I, I shift my hip, which is very different than rolling my hip. And then that gives you all the space to start doing things. What if from that um, position where you've grabbed his uh, sleeve, he then grabs your lapel and starts smashing you from there? That's yeah, if, if he's got, got hold of this, that, that is a, that's a, a, a huge problem. Yeah. yeah. That's when you've got to start working okay. and, and try to get the foot out the other side. Right. Because then you can invert me. Oh, okay. I didn't expect that. I'm a plata. <laughs> I'm a plata. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Because we, our, our attention is drawn to that leg that is being controlled. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the same thing. You know, when someone grabs you, all of our attention goes there. This is evidenced by a, every martial arts got, you know, 50 ways to, you know, escape the wrist grab and stuff. And the, the, the people who've done a lot of street fighting goes, you haven't got my other hand, die. You know, so the, the, their mind goes to, what resources do I have left? A lot of martial artists' minds go to, oh my God, you've taken one of my resources away. It's a kind of like, no, think about what you have left, not what's gone away. So um, it's kind of funny. So naturally when someone grabs their leg like that and grabs the collar and starts doing the cradle pass, we call it cradle pass, um, our, our tension's on that leg. Think about your other leg. Right. If you get it out there, you can start moving your hip. You can start taking out the other side, because that's the leg's free, and because it's, it, you know, you're, you're there. If you take this leg out the other side, you can invert, and then you've got omoplata. Omoplata. So maybe think a little, and this is a very short answer, but um, think, about, think about the other leg, taking it out there, so you can move your hip and get that lasso effect to tilt him, and then do things. Or take it out behind him, which allow you to invert and go out the back door. Right. So in other words, let's not think about the leg that he's got. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. No, and, and, and again, generally, the philosophy being, let's think about what's awesome about life and not about this little problem that we've got because of something that happened last week. So what, what do we have that's awesome and not what do we have that's gone? Yeah. yeah. And what's free to punch him and, oh my God, he's got my wrist crying about that. So what's available, that was another thing about escapes actually that John Jacques told me, um, he said that, maybe that's where I first got the idea, probably. Um, he's got you, he's got you held in a certain way. The first question he asked is not what's he got, what have you got free? He can't have everything. And that's the key to the escape. The key to your escape will be the bit of you that he hasn't got. Whereas your attention naturally goes to the thing he's got. Oh, he's got me in a headlock, get my head out. Your hands are free, your legs are free, your hip is free. Um, and so that's a, we go back to the, the philosophical idea there of what's free. And what was free is your other leg. Thank you very is much. Is that okay? Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm sorry, it all has to be.